Here we are. Hello, St. Joseph's. It is a special privilege to be joined tonight by the Tuesday small group that have <laughs> persisted throughout this Lenten se season. Uh, started in person, but they continued virtually. And they were the one small group that I'm aware of that as a group concluded the Way of Love a small group series that we had put forward. And they're now looking uh, forward to possibly continuing doing the Book of Acts that we're hearing uh, on these Sundays during the Easter season. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how you're gonna see the screen, but to my left right now are Rick, Jean, and Joan Filer. And to my right are the facilitators uh, of the group, Catherine and Chris Metzger. And on the bottom left is Kay Baker. And in the middle bottom is Angelica, who was joined by Stella, but Stella has disappeared. <laughs> and bottom right, we have Beth Shires. And we also have Lori, who is a part of this group, and she might be joining us midway through, uh, which is great. But if we have to pause to buzz her in, so to speak, we will do that. And we thought tonight uh, that we would try another one of these resources that are on the missionstclair.com website. And if you will give me a second, I wanna bring this up so I can show you how you at home might be able to access this. Once you bring up the Mission St. Clair website, if you click on the morning and evening prayer button, you can then scroll down and one of the wonderful resources that is in here is the New Zealand prayer book. Now the New Zealand prayer book has some very wonderful prayers that if you participated in our washing of the feet service during Holy Week, that was taken from the Compline service. We added in the washing of the feet, but the prayers came from night prayer. And you see that on the screen there. You just left click on that and you have the night prayer service, or as we know it as Compline in the Episcopal Church. And there are some beautiful prayers that we are going to work through tonight. Now, we as a group have talked through who's doing what. So at home, when you see the parts in bold, you certainly can be saying those along with us. But we have certain people who are going to try to take on these roles. And we might not remember who's supposed to do what. So just bear with us and let us begin with our night prayer. The angels of God guard us through the night and quieten the powers of darkness. The Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and to glory. It is but lost labor that we haste to rise up early and so late take rest and eat the bread of anxiety for those beloved of God are given gifts even while they sleep. Our help is in the name of the eternal God, who is making the heavens and the earth. Dear God, thank you for all that is good, for our creation and for our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this planet earth, for the gifts of life and of one another, for your love, which is unbounded and eternal. O thou most holy and beloved, my companion, my guide upon the way, my bright evening star. We repent the wrongs we have done. We have wounded your love. O oh God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. Light of the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you, to the very secret of our hearts, and all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us fountain of water well within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Eternal Spirit, flow through our being and open our lips. 
that our mouths may proclaim your praise. Let us worship the God of love. Alleluia, alleluia. And for our psalm tonight, Beth is going to lead us with Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains, but where shall I find help? From you alone, O God, does my help come, creator of the ever-changing hill. You will not let me stumble on the rough pathways. You care for me and watch over me without ceasing. The guardian of my people neither slumbers nor sleeps. The God of all nations keeps watch like a shadow spread over me. So the sun will not strike me by day, nor the moon by night. You will defend me in the presence of evil. You will guard my life. You will defend my going out and my coming in this night and always. Now we're going to invite Kay to share with us the reading that is appointed for Thursdays. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and those who are afraid are not perfected in love. We love because God first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother or sister, that person is a liar. For those who do not love their brothers and sisters whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And as you see, that is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 18 through 20. If you are of a mode to sing at home, you are welcome when you do this to have that song. But we are going to forego the hymn tonight. And we are going to continue with our prayers. I forget who's going to lead our prayers. Here, but you just passed song of Simeon. No, we'll come. We'll come up to that after we start the prayers. Okay. Number six, we were five. Into your hands. Number six. No, that's further down. So you at home, we're getting used to this, doing this online, just like you will be getting used to it. But we come to our prayers there that are on the bottom of page 178. I think it was Chris and Catherine that were going to do this. Yep. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Into your hands, O God, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O God of truth and love. Keep me, O God, as the apple of an eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And then switching over to the top right. Preserve us, O God, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in your peace. Continuing with the Song of Simeon. Praise be to God. I have lived to see this day. God's promise is fulfilled and my duty done. At last, you have given me peace. For I have seen with my own eyes the salvation you have prepared for all nations, a light to the world in its darkness. And the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to God, sustaining, redeeming, sanctifying, as in the beginning, so now, and forever. Amen. Continuing on the bottom of 179. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Now Angelica is going to lead in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we skip over to the right side of the page towards the bottom. I'll do the unbolded parts and Angelica, I think, is going to do the bolded parts. I will lie down in peace and take my rest. For it is in God alone that I dwell unafraid. Let us bless the earth maker, the pain bearer, the life giver. Let us praise and exalt God above all forever. May God's name be praised beyond the furthest star. Glorified and exalted above all forever. And now we decided we were going to skip down to one of Beth's favorite and my favorite prayers. And we're going to invite Beth to read prayer number six. I invite all of you to read with me at your home. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. It's quiet. Let the witness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us. Have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Christ be within us to keep us, beside us to guard before us to lead, behind us to protect, beneath us to support, above us to bless. The divine spirit dwells in us. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So thank you all for that. As you have experienced at home, it is a wonderfully worded, beautiful way of doing night prayer. We wanted to spend a few moments tonight to give our small group uh, to share with us uh, some of their own insights. So I guess I'll toss out the first question to you all. And you all completed this way of love during the Lenten and Easter season now. Are there any insights that you individually or as a group gain from this that you might want to share with our audience at home? Well, one of my favorite um, weeks was session two, which was pray. And um, it invited us to every day um, choose one of the types of prayer and be be cognizant of that prayer for the for the day and so the different types of prayer there's seven and their adoration which we were lifting up our hearts and minds to god and just enjoying his presence praise we're praising and not obtaining anything because we're just being drawn drawn to praise god thanksgiving which is gratitude penitence which is when we confess our sins and apologize and make amends. Oblation, um, where we offer ourselves in union with Christ for God's purpose. Intercession, where we're bringing before God the needs of others. And petition, where we are asking God that his will be done in our, our lives. And um, I just found that that when I was really thinking about it during the week that um, I was realizing that most of those forms of prayer were pretty much happening every day. And, um, but it, I just became more aware of it. And so I guess in some ways that was probably my favorite week that we did. Great. Thank you. 
I think it was important for us as a group um, to stick together, especially during this time of a pandemic. And, um, you know, when you're not going out and you're not um, getting together as a community, especially as our family of our church family, mm -hmm. um, it was important for me anyway, to, to connect to, um, you know, others in our church. And so it really became something that we looked forward to every week just to, you know, check on everybody and find out how they were doing and, and pray for, you know, those of our members, uh, our family members that were not doing um, as well. So it was really something that um, I looked forward to every week and we were going to continue. Wonderful, wonderful. Other thoughts? I think I also, following on what Catherine said, um, many shared together the last week that we were doing this study that there probably wasn't brand new material, sure that we'd never read or, you know, really even concepts that we hadn't already been introduced to. But what was uniting and powerful during this time was the community that was built between seven groups of people because we had the filers were three and the Metzgers were two. And then there were four of us who were participating singly. Angelica has a family, um, so she represents a family. Kay and I and Lori were single women by ourselves in this. And I, I maybe that played a, a more significant role for me to um, touch with other people. Even if it wasn't physical touch, it felt like it from, from this group. Every week. Um, it was the touch of the Holy Spirit um, working in and among us and really knitting us together you know there's marty probably can quote the um the scripture of knitting us together we're knit together in the womb that god knits us together i believe he does that with groups and people and building relationship too and he has, has knit us together and i think we i know i feel i feel a love for all of these people now and we did not know all of us did not know each other so yeah what a gift. Yeah, so what a gift. we thank St. Joe's for the um, opportunity, um, the environment, the invitation. And then we thank God and the Holy Spirit for joining us every week and bringing something that was really beautiful every week. Yes, yes. It really was. It was... It was, I don't know what compelled me to join this group, but something, something compelled me, probably was God, but I felt compelled to join it. And I'm so happy I did even more. I was happy the first meeting, but then after all this stuff started happening, I was even more grateful and thankful. And I looked forward to it every Tuesday night. And it was just a way to connect and to talk about, you know, the scriptures and, you know, just talk about our faith and, just relate to other people who have, you know, are like-minded and it was just such a comfort and it actually helped me grow closer to God during this time. Mm. So I'm so forever grateful for all of you. That you. And we, for you. Mm. Was, was this for any of you, your first experience in a small group? It was mine. Was it? I think it was Lori's too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe mom too. I think it might have been her first time. Um, well, we did 101, because we put 101 together, but I think this was the, the an actual small group. I think I was a virtual virgin when we had to switch to a uh, to the Zoom aspect of it. Uh, it it's an amazing way uh, to be able to one hear your the Sunday service and two to have these small groups where you're just like you're there 
I mean, you don't have the cheese and crackers, you know, that you share with everybody uh, or any mind altering beverages. But we're on uh, our own wine. But, <laughs> <bring> our own. <laughs> but, but, but to, to be able to have this connection virtually it, it is just amazing to me. Yeah. Well, I, I can't, for one, I, I listen to the news and we watch Netflix and uh, I see stories and such, but it's not a connection like this is. This is uh, same screen, but a connection that's not there with everything else. There's certainly no connection with the people on the news. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And we're hearing good news. Um, I, I have to say that um, building on what uh, Beth was saying about that we didn't all know each other. Um, uh, you know, I, I knew Kay kind of by just seeing her, but had never been in any kind of a of a close connection with her. I didn't know Angelica at all. I didn't know Brett at all. And um, and for mom, you know, probably didn't know, except by face, uh, uh, most people. And um, it, it's, we're so different. <laughs> so uh, our personalities are different. Our situations are different. And um, I, I am so glad we're going to continue because it, it's such a meaningful thing. Um, I know we, we've talked about how meaningful small groups are in the past, and um, but this really brought it out to me about how important it is to stay connected and to build relationships with people. Like building a relationship with people I didn't know at all, like Angelica and Kay and, and Lorette, you know, it's just been beautiful. I can't wait to be able to physically give them a hug. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I think that's the the building of relationships, uh, the getting to know each other is really shown in the fact that we would like to continue this on in a, it would be very nice to continue it on in a group that we could all get together. But this still way we are together individually in each of our own homes and we can uh, at least touch our minds and our voices to each other and, and want to continue to study something where we can share our beliefs, uh, share our faith. Nice, nice, nice. And to question with each other and, and just be real. This was a very real group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, we had hoped that Lorette would be able to join us tonight, but as the the newest uh, member of St. Joseph's. She was just completing Episcopal 101 with us when uh, all of this happened. And for her to have this experience and be able to bond with you all, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn to say that she would be saying that this was something that sort of helped us cement her relationship with St. Joseph's. Mm -hmm. so, for sure. I, I, I hope so. I hope so, yeah. She was very, very participating in the, in the group. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I don't think anybody was afraid of participating, even when I had to argue with Chris. Um, <laughs> I don't think anybody felt like we, like, you know, we couldn't say what was on our mind. We couldn't um, say, wait a minute, I don't think that's what I believe, um, or to question. Um, so, which is really important, and I think that's what being an Episcopalian is all about anyway, is, is being able to use our own brains and be able to figure things out on our own. Um, and I think that the next study, uh, Catherine and Chris, on Acts is particularly uh, important right now because it is all about, you know, what happens after Jesus leaves us physically on earth. So I'm really looking forward to the next study that we're gonna do. Yeah, and we'll start that next week. Yeah, yeah. really. Uh, yeah. And maybe there's some others out there that might like to join and be part of the group too. And what a perfect lead in Beth, because <laughs> uh, with, this, with this wonderful uh, non-paid political advertisement, <laughs> uh, we would love for more of all of us to have an opportunity to do what this Tuesday night group is doing. So those of you who are in dormant groups, I would uh, ask you maybe to consider 
This is a wonderful medium. We can set you up with the Zoom just like these guys are set up. If all you need is a web enabled device that has a microphone and a camera, uh, and it's a one click thing and you are a part of the group, uh, very easy to be done. And uh, there's materials that we can provide to you, the wonderful uh, materials that uh, Catherine Metzger has put together for the X. Uh, series that I think is seven weeks for them to do. Uh, so throughout the Easter season, basically up to Pentecost. Uh, and if, if you are interested uh, in revamping your group and you need the materials, uh, let me know at church and we'll get them to you. If you are not in a small group or maybe have never been in one, what a great opportunity this presents for maybe to give it a try. So if you are in that situation and you'd like to be a part of a group, uh, call us in the church office or send Charlotte in the church office an email. And just like we are collecting names for people who want masks and people who want uh, forward day by days, we'll start another list. And that'll be a list of people who want to be a part of a small group. So I know that this in touch ministry that Barbara McKenzie started has been such a wonderful help to our people not to be isolated. Well, here's another way that we can only not only not feel isolated, but feel connected at the deepest and most important level. So uh, just a little from the rector uh, advertisement for our small group. So I want to thank uh, these wonderful people for their willingness to participate in this little experiment tonight. So I want to thank you all for that. Is there any other closing thoughts that you all have that you haven't had a chance to say? I want to thank you, Father Marty. Yes. Thank you. Oh, you do. Thank you. We love you. Yes, very much. Definitely welcome anybody who wants to be part of our group and just wholeheartedly say, do it. Let's jump in and do it. Wonderful. Wonderful. So uh, I'm going to do a little closing prayer, then I'll take it off the recording, and then you guys can continue to meet. How's that? Thank so, you. You know, we, we promised that we would pray daily for those people, especially through Reverend Kathleen Gannon at Bethesda Hospital. So let us remember all those people at Bethesda Hospital, for all the hospitals in our community, for all the hospitals in our nation and in the world, for all those doctors, nurses, medical technicians, scientists, all of those patients, and all of their families as well that you would wrap your loving arms gently around them to protect them and that they might know the tremendous gift that they are to us and that you would support them and bring them home safely. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Thank Father you. Marty. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Good night.